Do you think it's weird that we're talking and nobody else is? Maybe that's a clue. That it's my show? Yeah. <laughs> that's the only clue. <laughs> And they're looking this way. <laughs> There's just a couple Am of I little the only things. Drink the and also show. that I have the most food. We need the bartender from The Shining to stand behind there. You know the guy in The Shining? Yeah. With that he should nice be standing right behind there with the uplighting and saying, mm. That's another show. Mr. When Jenner. you get your show, you do that, okay? Okay. But this is my show. There is no one behind the bar and there is no one exists, but you know. And there's no. <laughs> so so who's gonna eat? Are you gonna eat? I'm gonna eat. I'm just sure. eating some. Hey, Are I'm these gonna cooked? commit. Only chicken legs. I You've have got two chicken well, legs. Do you want no, I wanted a chicken breast. I don't like legs. End of show. There's always someone. You well, know what I mean? I've got about 200 pounds worth of food. They asked me as I walked in what I wanted to eat. Right. I said kosher. And they said, what? Kosher. And Why would you be kosher? Why can't I be? You can't Just because I was... Just You're not of the people. Just they don't want you. Okay. I want to know what kosher food really is. Okay. Um, I think I can explain it on behalf of the yeah, Jewish your race. People, your people. I think it means that a rabbi comes and sucks all the blood out of it. Don't quote me on it. Doesn't it? And then he blesses it. So animals are killed in a funny way? In a very, but in a loving way. Loving way? The rabbi sings a lovely song. Is this true? Dreidel, dreidel, dreidel. Yeah. You know, sings a song to it. Then I think they suck the blood out, because I don't think Jews believe in drinking the blood of anything, do they? Unless it's a special occasion. And then it's dietetic. <laughs> it's always sugar free. Did that clear it up for you? Yeah, so they suck the blood out of really nice animals, and then. Not you know, nice ones, you know. He, he Dead sucks ones. the blood out. The rabbi doesn't himself, he has an assistant. Does he actually <laughs> press his lips to the flesh of the animal? <laughs> or does he rely on the siphon technique? You know, I used to get requests from the Jewish Chronicle, could they interview me? You know, because they embraced me as like one of their heroes. And now I can just see them chipexing my name out of the whole Jewish. We don't want her at the charities. We don't want to know about her. Did you work at a Jews Jewish at a camp? Table. I did. All the kids were um, from Rich. Beverly Hills. Yeah. You know I mean? It's like, De um, Danny Kaye's daughter, um, Hedy Lamarr's oh son, God. William Wyler's son was in my camp. Any of them not screwed up? No. All of them screwed up? No, no. It was extraordinary. They really, they, they were sad kids. But we had them for eight weeks. We could whip them into shape. You know, us, the, the few goyim. You mean literally whip? <laughs> yeah. No, it was amazing because these kids were pampered by nannies. They probably never saw their famous parents. So, I mean, how did you whip the Jews into shape? The Jewish campers. We, we, we taught them what pain really was all about. <laughs> and, but we did it in a loving way. You know, the way, because you're not supposed to smack kids now, isn't it? This is the great thing about England Could now. Could you smack them in the good old days? No, we didn't smack them. What we did, we, 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 we sit the kids down. These are 11-year-old kids. There's about a dozen of them. This is in my cabin, my little cabin. And we would sit Terry's them down. Terry's cabin. Terry's cabin. We'd sit them down and say, here's rules to live by. Let's all talk about them. Let's agree on what's a decent way to live for the next few weeks. And they would agree and say, okay, now we've got the rules. And every day when they violated, violated a rule, we would mark it down. At the end of the day, we did this little thing where you twist the arm, just not, not this is not tight, this okay. is like a massage. Like a hickey to the Gen wrist. It was, you twist it and the tricep pops out. And just a little thing there, you go, it's a sweet little tab. You don't have to hit hard and boy, does that sting. And you do at the end of it. Now, what was interesting about watching these that kids? That seems quite. It seems cruel, but it's it, it isn't. It's 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 a it thing we do. Seems more scientific. But we tried to take all the, the the venom out of it. All the you know, so it wasn't done in anger. What did what did you do as a I child? I was a for scout. It? A boy scout. Mm. Did oh, you get sorry. awards for things? I was a blue one. What? Well, I no. I was. Yeah, I got all the badges up the arms and like and for what? Like, you, come on, show off. Go for make eagle. Come on. Rockets. Did you make eagle or life or what? Make eagle. No, That's you don't. Sweet. We don't have that. We we have cheese scouts. I was a cheese scout. You mean you, you can find cheese in a forest? Cold? I could I could start my own country. Did you sleep in tents and things? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we sleep in tents. Cook food. Went down potholes, down water potholes where there's a huge hundred foot, you know, um, waterfall that you'd climb down. Uh, canoe down rapids, climb mountains. Did you like doing that guy stuff? Suck the blood out of pigs. What? Did you like doing that guy stuff? Yeah, because I'm I an mean, action you transvestite. I'm what? an action transvestite. Action transvestite. <laughs> what, you rip your lumberjack off no, and no, underneath I, is I'm a brassiere? I'm a male M appeal. That's I mean, what, interesting. No, no. That's what a good M thing appeal, for you to maybe think about. But Diana Rigg, what she stole from the boys with that sort of kick-ass action, that I'm a male version of that, stealing it back. <laughs> no, but I liked all that, that running, jumping, climbing trees. I, I was really into it. I, I still am, but I just don't do it. We used to tell ghost stories. That was the great oh, thing yeah, about ghost the campfire. Stories. And then you'd be you'd dragged up to the mountains. You'd sit there, and then these men who I... I didn't question for a moment their manhood, would tell us stories and frighten us. And it was wonderful. It was being scared. You mean he scares you now? Like, because you were saying No, no, no action transvestism is a very different thing than what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's just storytelling. <laughs> 
didn't want to be, be scared out of your mind. I yeah. mean, that's what every kid wants. That's it's, the great joy. Yeah. But people really now seem to be frightened of fear or being scared. I don't know. They're different things. I mean, I remember, this is leaping, but we had a screening at the ICA for children of Baron Munchausen, and this woman afterwards came up and attacked me for frightening her child because of the angel of death. I said, that's what we do. That's what fairy tales were about. It's the stories were always about frightening yeah, people, fairy. and you survive them. That's what, as a kid, I, I, there was a, I was, years ago, I, I picked up a, a book in the house of, uh, of Little Red Riding Hood that was there for my daughter, and it was horrendous because Nothing happened in it. I mean, the wolf didn't really eat granny. The woodsman didn't uh, what come and kill the wolf. What story was this? Little Red Riding Hood. Where it was done so that there was no fear, there was no frighteningness. There was, it was reassuring. And the point of all the fairy tales... You mean tales, a feel-good story? Yeah, you know, all through it. But the point of a fairy tale is you, you take him down paths, and mm. you, which are frightening, terrifying, scary, uh, unknown, and you survive, and somehow you get through it. And so it kind of builds up your little muscles for your, real yeah. life. Yeah, your adrenal But this woman was muscles. going on at me because I frightened her child. I said, yes, that's exactly what I was trying to do. But, you know, it, it ends happily. I met a kid, um, a woman at Eric Idle's house, if I can drop a really important hey, name. Hey, we'll all drop that. names as the dinner goes yeah. on. I've met him. I've worked with him. He's a I, lovely man. I've seen him on television. Yeah, I just heard him on the radio on the way in here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, at Eric's house, there was a woman, a German woman, who was protecting her child from all forms of any disturbing thought, all forms Is of Is this fear. in L.A.? Yeah, in L.A. Yeah. And, and I said, you're destroying that child's life because, you know, in 10 years she's going to go out and there's going to be a world there that's going to attack her, do things to her, frighten her, and she's not going to be prepared because the world she's been living in is this amniotic sac that's been... Uh, Did the woman understand mother. anything you were no. talking about? No. Yeah. She wanted to kill me because of the things I was, in the way, threatening her daughter. Well, you know, American... Uh, sorry to go heavy here, but that's the whole American... Um, disease now is that they're so afraid of the dark side. Afraid of Star Wars? It is, it is dark. I mean, it, you know what I mean? It is the darkest nation of them all at this moment, but everybody mm. wants to feel good. They're in full, that's denial. exactly it, full denial of yeah. that. Whereas I was brought Americans up Austria, and our fairy tales were Struvelpeta and Max yeah. and Moritz, where seriously, it never had a happy ending. You just see Max and Moritz, who were these um, kind of children with like a stomach illness, because yeah. they were distended, yeah. and the mother to teach them a lesson not to eat the cookies, chop the fingers off to the picture of them with all the blood running down. Do you remember that? Yeah. And then they'd be sent to the forest, and a fox with warts would eat them, and they'd have to carve oh. open its stomach, and they'd come out and going, thank you, grandmama. You know, it was yeah. like grotesque. But and my mother would read it with joy. Well-balanced people. And now. look at me now. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Did you see, did, did you see Headed Peter? It's that's Struvel Peter. Struvel Peter. Yeah. Did you see oh, yeah. that? It was quite. It's all wondrous. stories about a child that says you shouldn't play with matches, and the next thing is her hair's on fire. And these are the pictures in the children's book. Yeah. That's in the children's yeah, book. That's you great. Love no, they're great would... drawings. Struvel Peter, long fingernails, because he's been stuck under the floorboard. He's an by early parents. prototype for Hitler. Yeah. <laughs> you had a really well-adjusted life. You know what I mean? It's a true American childhood in the country, you know, Tom Sawyer, Huck Finn stuff. And, I, and it was just nice. That's all. And, and we built things and made things, tree houses. In, in the winter, it was 40 degrees below zero, and we didn't have an indoor toilet, and you'd have to go out of the house, down the... Were you poor? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, the, um, and we go to the Biffy, which was, we had a two-holer. It was just a little wooden shed with two holes. And, and like for the family, other family members to perch next to you? No, but just, I don't know, I suppose for like diarrhea, diarrhea when you're really out of control. And you're vomiting at the Anything, same time yeah, you're for trying... your viewers who are confused. <laughs> I guess, I don't know, may, or maybe parts of my family had different uh, orifices than I had. You only need one at a time in, where well, I, they in didn't, Chicago. Maybe, maybe, they, they, maybe it was a cholesterol problem there, and right. they didn't have the bags. So, you know, so Plug you can, them in. Yeah, you can do both. Be me know, and Scotty. You can sit <laughs> and empty over there at the... the, the okay. Table. So we have that. But, 40 degrees below zero, rushing out in your little bathrobe with your little frayed uh, slippers to have a, a dump, as we, we said in the uh, In old Minneapolis. Days. In, in, the, in the Giphy. The Biffy. 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 And I don't know where that comes well, from. Yeah, I was just thinking how a, people come from different Charles words. Charles Bifford, I think you'll find in Minneapolis, be, yeah, invented yeah, the yeah, two-holer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, well, you, you, you got to research these shows. Well, you don't Don, just Don show up. Donald Crapper did well, didn't he? <laughs> no, Crapper was not the first one to do a flushing toilet, in fact. He got the... It, it became eponymous. <laughs> he be, I don't know if the, the toilet became eponymous with him or he became eponymous with the toilet. But he was not the first one. It was done before, but he got... He, he was the successful one. Well, food. he had the better name. Well, I think he was his, <laughs> the, the, the queen. His name. Why Donna's Crapper got down to a crap and the guy before it said Thomas Mitchell. Why don't we take a biff? I remember going at my grandma's house. We had an outside loo and you probably never saw an outside loo. But Privileged. We, 
Yeah, that was just, you just wouldn't want to go out. You just hold it We in went to camp for that and paid $1,000 for two months really? to do that. But, I mean, go we ahead. We learned control of our bodies. Your grandmother sent you out there? No, no, no. Just your body sent you out there. Your, your backside sent you out there. Unless you wanted to lie and poo all night. You went outside, man. It's yeah. a but they had, they had a But they had a, pot, a potty for, for, for just having a wee. But for poo, you had to go, mm. well, you went out down the, the end of the garden. <laughs> Americans, and you don't use it in your act, are, are not obsessed with toilet at all. Do, do you know what I'm, we're, we're just not, it's not, we don't think relieving yourself of gastric things are funny, like in England no, they do. Well, you do, and I wonder, do you think the biff affected England. you in no, a weird way? that's why I came to England, Because you thought that was funny. And I think that's why I came to England. Because we're the only people on the camera. planet that found excrement humorous. <laughs> 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 let's talk about you now. Let's get off of him, because I can see you get Nancy. You know what I mean? If you don't let him out of the corral, they'll just back up and start. No, I'm okay. I'm just going to drink and eat red things. <laughs> if God could come down now, whether he's Jewish or a Goy or whatever, and he could say, we could remove your penis, and we could turn you into a woman, and the deal would be done now, would you do it? Uh, and you would be a gorgeous woman. Would you do that deal? Uh, yeah, I could well do. You could? Yeah, I'm now actually quite easy. Why now? Because I have the freedom to do what I want, wear what I want, express myself how I want, and I'm not so bothered. But, um, I mean, Do you have use for your penis? Yes, it's sometimes, you know, when there's a draft under the door. No, I do. <laughs> really but we, shouldn't, we shouldn't go into this in depth because it's boring. But, uh, just a little, I mean, no, but, but let's yeah. slide around on the surface. This is how she's made her living. This is how she's made her living trying to get people to talk about these things. No, I mean. I no, can but, ask him. No, but yeah, I spend my living talking about this shit. So I don't, you know, <laughs> no, and it's, it's all like we're locking antlers now. The trouble is I won't come up with any new insights that I haven't bored, droned on about. No, but would, but I've never heard you say if you could become a woman, you would become a woman. Oh, yeah, well, no, that's, um. Common knowledge in my in your circle in my in my diary or something which I don't write. <laughs> right. Okay. That's all I wanted to know. But yeah, no, because I, but I, I do believe that humans, um, um, you know, sex is coded in about three months, and we have this big thing about men and women, different, different, different. But in fact, human units and code, sex is coded in just so that we can procreate. Well, no, what's interesting about when is it is, coded in? I didn't get. What, I know, about three scale? months, I think. I don't three know. Three months. What in the in the womb? In the, or yeah. In the air. So because because in the womb or air? Where? Womb. Oh, in the womb, well, okay. Well, I've seen before that. I don't think it's just, could it be genetic? Is there the gene that says, oh. What, TV? No, it's the X or the Y. No. We're not making this up. No, 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 yeah, no, yeah. no, 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 not actually. That's, that's the big one. That's yeah. boy or girl, that's, you know, penis or not. Yeah. We're talking about the details, the, the subtleties. Oh, yeah, well, my thing is, is definitely genetic. Actually, yeah. it was a shock for me in college because we used to take tests, and I didn't know what the, they were about. I thought they were sort of IQ tests. They were very big, and this is in 60, about 1960 big on tests, and it dis I discovered that um, because at the end, the end result of the test was that I had an awful lot of feminine qualities in the 60s. This was shocking. I mean, we're talking about the beginning of the 60s, not uh, the 60s. By the end, they'd be on their yeah. knees with happiness. Like, Whoa, what? Oh, God. My, I, I, and then you start wondering, what am I really doing? Because, because I like art. I like music. I like the things that were deemed feminine. That's what's interesting about that time, how... Simplistic and was that to test it, it if you were just, nuts or not, or what was the purpose what? of the test? I don't know. What, no, no, it wasn't. It was to find out what, who you were, I mean, what you would be best in life oh, as. Oh, I remember that, yeah. That yeah. sort of thing. I mean, how does it, when else. you go to America, how do they put that, you know, because especially now, again, like not facing the darkness, how do they, how do they deal with you? Because oh, they really like everything prepackaged. Yeah, well, I, th I think essentially the, the coast where I went to were essentially as cool and as uncool about it as they have been in London and Shetlands. Uh, Shetland, I should say. Sh yeah, without the S. Um, because I found everywhere I go that, that people, some people are cool, some people are not cool. Um, and you can go to places where they're going to be more uncool, lesser square of a Saturday night, and you can go other places where they're going to be totally cool, like a music festival or something. You know, you can just you can choose your spaces, and they will be cool or uncool. Did you go out of but New the York? But the industry was less cool, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Did you it, go out of New York into Middle America? Yeah, but I didn't sort of wander around and uh, um, in a huge makeup. I, I got I, I was in a stage where I was getting kind of bored of makeup in that stage of um, I'm quite an advanced transvestite, so I, I don't need to You're wear. You liberated. You burnt your bra. Yeah, I burnt my, <laughs> I burnt my lipsticks. Um, I believe that humor is uh, human, and not national. They don't, mm. When they talk about American humor and British humor, I do not think there's a difference. For the mm. example, that mm. when Terry 
it was doing uh, the the animation in Python, you didn't think that's God, that's so American that animation, <laughs> and that's so very British with a bit of Welsh in there, and that guy must be from Sheffield. Surely there's someone from Newcastle in there. You don't do it. You just yeah. say that's funny, and you look at the Simpsons, and I just laugh, and they say it's American humor. I say, well, no, it's classic it's humor. It's, not. it's classic it's humor. Yeah. And it, it and the certain references you don't get. References are always something you're going to be tripped up on, and if you do it in an entirely different language, like in French, then they're not going to. Hmm. Um, understand a totally different language because they're not hearing anything coming in. But it's human. It is not national. I really don't believe it's national. I don't believe there is a French sense of humour. There's, there's all these different senses of humour in every country, and you've got to link up with the people who dig that kind of stuff. It's like to me like a jazz player too. You know, if somebody grabs a sax, you know the way you kind of, I mean your your voice, it, the joke is just like your your mm. your like your riffing the way mm. a sax does, and mm. and you say okay, well he uses a bigger sax or he's got like less oxygen in his diaphragm, but it's got nothing. To, they always ask me that. What's the difference between American English? I go, babe, it's level of intelligence. If you're really like crawling on all fours, if you throw a pie in your face, even if you're Scandinavian or Swedish, Good. you'll think that's funny. It doesn't matter where you come mm. from. If you're real smart, you'll get you. You you can't. Uh guess it beforehand. You think, well, because America has such a power with 80% of the world's media being controlled in Hollywood, that you tend to think, well, we've got to do things that I've got to cater to them. Yeah. Mm. But in fact, bigger. if you don't, if you cater to yourself, then there's a number of people, not necessarily the whole block of mainstream, but a lot of the other people looking for new and other will, will latch into it. Well, especially you too, because <clears throat> was there ever a time, I, I never asked you this question, where you actually had like lines written down and you tried to do comedy the way comedians do? Like to tell a story that was scripted. Did you ever do that? No, no, I, I, I tried to write it down. I used to wander around um, uh, Streatham Common with a tape recorder, ad libbing stuff in the middle of the night. And then try to repeat it? And then I tried to write it down from that, but I just couldn't get it. So in the end, I, it all came from. I, I couldn't write it down so that it seemed to be coming out of my mouth. It just mm. sort of. You know when you're in a bush and, you know, yeah. <laughs> and it just didn't... But they do. No, I they, never they, get we, it. We watched the people, Billy Connolly at one point said, yeah, well, can't you write it down? You can't write Robin Williams. The same, you, you know, I, I, I equate yeah, Lenny, the three of these people, yeah. very similar. And it doesn't work. And it's like, and Robin, there was a night after Munchausen, we were sitting around again with Eric Robin Idle. Robin Williams? Very, I saw him Robin on television. Okay. <laughs> famous people, famous. But we were sitting there in, in, in Rome, and, and Robin went off on this riff, this number about this character. Who was just, I mean, a real fine guy, just sat like this. And he's talking real simple. And suddenly, the story, this takes over, it takes several minutes to do this thing. But he starts just sliding into, you know, you know, the, the serial killer that he is, in fact. And, his, and the things he, the incest he'd done with his daughter. And, and, everything. and it was the most frightening character. Now, Robin was just doing it. He was flowing, and there was an audience. It was like, you know, sitting around a table like this. And it was brilliant. But he then, I don't know, I, I bumped into him you know, several weeks later and said, Come on, you got to do that character, and he couldn't. He tried to do it, and what was strange was he had remembered the joke bits. He had remembered the jokes, but he had forgotten the whole string of character and amb ambience and atmosphere, which was it. Uh, it was what it was about. Well, that's uh, so, some bits of performances, and so, some bits are performance led, and some bits are uh, led by the idea of the writing or whatever. But there's certain bits that you can you can just hit one, and uh, and you can sense. Oh, I, can't, I can't get that back. That's just there. You know it's gone? Yeah. You mean you wave it goodbye? Well, you don't. You, tr you try and get it back. I mean, it's you like you're having constant some. babies, and some of them are dying, yeah. and some yeah. of them are walking, isn't it? Yeah, well, that's improv, you know. If everybody went silent on you, like it really didn't work, would it all implode, or could you keep being funny because you're getting a kick out of it? Uh, I mean, what are you surfing I don't know. On? I, did, I have gone down to zero and then into minus and then back up again once, but that was a Have very you, like, bad admitted game. defeat? Have you bowed your head and said, okay, I'm Only not funny? Only street performing. Street, no, street performing, I actually, I, because street, <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> no, just bow your head and apologize. All right, you win. No, it's better than I suck. <laughs> I can't believe it either. you want to hear my story? Yeah. Oh, okay, sorry. I just, I twice dismissed an audience. <laughs> that is beautiful, just to say, just go. I'm giving out stuff here. You're not giving me anything back. Go. And they wouldn't go then. <laughs> They wouldn't go. Once I said, no, really go, I'm not going to do anything. I am not going to do anything. You're, you're a terrible audience. What can I say? You know, I've seen a lot of audiences. I'm really doing stuff here, and you're just, you're like kind of dead, and so go away. That's, <laughs> that was, that's fantastic. That was great. Twice I sent them away. Have you ever I made yourself make hysterical? Laugh. Yeah, a lot of times. I mean, uh, in a sad way. Like, I, <laughs> I just try and make myself laugh, and in a sad way, I laugh at my own stuff. I re-listen to stuff that I've done, and I've laughed good. at that. Really? That's I watch all the Python stuff with them. That was really interesting. When I did that Python gig mm. in HBO thing, just watching all these sketches going by, some which, which you hadn't seen for a few mm. years. All of so there's all the Pythons watching 
12 minutes worth of sketches going by. What, it's just a shot of you watching the Python? No, no, no. It was, it was like they were doing their, their benefit. <laughs> They've all got together in, in Aspen, right? All of them on stage, and Graham Chapman's Ashes in an Urn. Yeah. He was which, in an Ashes in an Urn? Well, this was HBO thinking, let's do something really clever. We'll have an urn brought out. And, and they were trying to do it as a, as a as solemn a gag? No, as a, it was kind of a gag, but it was more solemn than a gag. And, and we were in this meeting, I, was, I really didn't want to do that, that show. I just hated the idea of us all these old men getting together and being fated. And, and this idea of the Graham being brought out in, in an urn, <gasps> and we're all supposed to play along with this idea. And so I came up with this thought that, well, <laughs> can I kick it over at some point in the show? Or sneeze and it all blows all over. No, well, that's, I kicked it over. I mean, it was, it, I kicked it you over. Kicked it over. It was. An it, it was one of the best sounds from an audience I've <laughs> yeah. ever heard in my I was, life. I wasn't bloody watching, and I heard it. Oh. It was like enormous. But the noise. It was like two things. You were both. It was like maybe the Bing Bang was like this because people were shocked and so they're, <gasps> they're inhaling and they were laughing at the same time, if that's possible, which is ah, an exhale. Mm. The noise was. The it moment was, was extraordinary. Yeah, I, I'm going to leap to Lenny because you know that night we were leap there to watching Lenny. it. When you said, "Are there any niggers in the audience?" Yeah, it he is, said that. Well, this is Lenny Bruce. Bruce. I mean, he's Lenny Bruce not him. Him. He's a decent guy. Okay. He would never, ever, he's ever say these words. Yes, he's Scandinavians, maybe possibly. No, but, but this moment. was a Lenny Bruce bit. Lenny Bruce. So it was Lenny did it. Lenny is guilty. <laughs> Lenny will burn in hell for this. No, no, it was a good piece because it, it was, was a brilliant was moment. But what's so interesting in the play, which you know, at the time when some of us are old enough to who, who saw the man alive, and. But you turn up the lights in the in the theater, and the audience is a decent theater goer and people who've paid good money. And he says this, and I've never seen people shrink more. The, and then he said, "Say the word." I mean, people are terrified of saying the word, and it's it's kind of interesting because Lenny was all about trying to get people to say the word, so it takes the the power out of it. Mm. But the power is still there. Yeah, and it's in the mo an extraordinary moment. But the black people have reclaimed it. It was the fact that you know, the, the, the w if you say the word enough, then it would become a meaningless word. Mm -hmm. And black people have sort of reclaimed that word so that they can use it. And use it. Like like gay people. It's hard to put in a song queer. though. It's hard to rhyme it. I found. <laughs> <laughs> is it? What songs do you do? Well, you know. Well when... known for your songs. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't know your oof. I was just your work. I don't know. Trying to bring I'm it sorry. back to me. Hey, cigar, hey. I thought. Cigar. Yeah, yeah. I am so off the air. I can't believe it. <laughs> but, but it's it's an extraordinary. Yeah, David's we, got his we, head the, back. The, worst, the only time we did something. You know you're doing well when your producer's got their head in the chicken enchilada. Because <laughs> we tried to they do. They all I mean, left me. We stole from Lenny in, 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 in Life of Brian, where Brian, when he learns that his father's a Roman. And he's, you know, he's supposed to be Jewish, and, and he does that long speech about, I'm a, I'm a kike, a hook nose, a red sea pedestrian. He goes on every derogatory word mm -hmm. for a Jew, and I'm proud of it. And he walks out, and that was our kind of tribute to Lenny, Lenny Bruce. Oh, right, right. Do you get pissed off when people short. copy you? Oh, no. You don't? No, no. I would. I mean, don't you get like, I was there for, you know, you could turn no. bitter. No, because no. I've made their, their, their stand, and everything will be measured against them. No, but even so that. But even that. I mean, I think it's. I think. See, I think what's wrong is that Python is like, okay, whoa, big stuff. Spike Milligan. There was a whole. I mean, we're part of it. You know, we're all. That's. It's. It's the continuity that I think gets constantly being stopped because it's not good for but business. But being from America, we didn't know about Spike Milligan, nor did we know I about did. the goons. That's why I came here because the goons, the running, jump, jumping, standing. That's film, why you came. Is one of the because reasons of the goons? I loved eating comedies and the goons. Yeah. How did you, how'd you know about the goons? The tapes came out no, yeah. on radio on FM radio. They were playing mm. the goons, and I said, "This is extraordinary stuff. Like, nothing like that existed in America." So you didn't I, like Jerry Lewis? <laughs> <laughs> I did actually. When I was younger, I did. Can I mention names again in places? You met Dean Martin? No, Don't I met Jerry me. Lewis. Saw him on television. I didn't, in, 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 in Cannes, in Cannes, you know, that very famous place. We were sure. there with Meaning of Life, and, and, and Terry Jones was up doing an interview, because nobody was talking to me. So Terry's doing an interview at the Carlton, I'm on the Carlton Terrace, of course, and, it's, um, it's, and he, he's running down with a camera crew behind him, and, and he's just being silly. And he, and it's, it's, that's this wonderful thing about performing, when one is so taken by the spirit, if we can talk like that, you know. Mm -hmm. You just, you're obsessed by whatever it is you're doing. And he actually is running around grabbing people, saying, who is Monty Petit? Monty Petit, Monty Petit, Monty Petit, Monty Petit, who is Monty Petit? Who, who? And all these friends, and they're just like, and, and he are. grabs me, and he doesn't know, he doesn't recognize me, his best friend, <laughs> with half his name. And he doesn't, he, <laughs> Monty Petit, oh! And I said, oh, Monty Petit. 
And I start taking my trousers down. Oh, wait, wait. <laughs> and we're doing this, and the camera's on us, and I feel this heat behind me, this, this volcano, this seething mass of just hatred and heat. And I turn around, <laughs> and it's Jerry Lewis. And he's there. And he, the camera isn't on him. He doesn't know who these idiots, assholes are that are standing in front of him. And he hates us because we're in his way and nobody's looking at him. I've never felt, I just felt it, it was like awful. You know why he was angry? I mean, it wasn't just that it's the next thing. It's, I think some comedy is so like, um, it's like the devil. You know, it's uh, like a Milton Berle kind of comedy where it's like, hey, my mother-in-law. And you see it in the eyes, you know, like Bernard Mann. There's an ugliness to Ooh, it. Yeah. Or else, and they're divided between, I've never said this, but like angels or, like when you're doing it, you're kind of free, it's freedom. And other ones, you're, you'd see people in hell, like they're restricted to those lines or they're restricted to that attitude. And it, you know, you see it in New York when they come on stage and you, I feel their pain, I can't laugh when they go, anybody been on a date lately? Yeah. And you think it's just about vomiting bile. Whereas, and, and, they're, and so the prisoners are like, Jerry Lewis, is what he's about. Yeah, Jerry Lewis is, <laughs> is captured till he's 75 going, blah, 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 you know, and, and God said, you will be in hell, you will make a fortune. Dean will die, and you will be cursed well, to do right. this ludicrous moronic. Only one nation in the world respects him. France! <laughs> Let them eat France! The only thing is that I'd say is that I, uh, I, you know, some people do comedy to people to get the laughs. I do it to myself in order to make myself laugh, and, and hopefully they get it, because I just, uh, I like talking crap. Yeah. Endless crap. I can really get off my face and do it to myself in a very sad way. It's really enormously sad and quite cathartic. So the minute the distance between sadness and hugely healthy, yeah. they, they're really close to yeah, each other. Yeah, but if you're in touch with your sadness. Mm. No, no, but, sadness. But, 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 it's no, just, it's not, just sadness. Like you know, no, it's like, no, but, but, but it's a it's, kid it's, entertaining himself, yeah. and that's like pure joy. But it's it, not about somebody spewing how angry they first, are that they're fat. That was my theory of with Python when we were about to finish, I really thought the last series would be so boring because up till then we'd been surprising. People tuned in to be surprised. And I thought, let's just be really dull and do about three or four shows that are just abominably dull. So people start switching off, switch off by the millions. And suddenly there's only two people watching. And then we do the best show we've ever done in our <laughs> lives. And the word, oh, my, did you see it? No, no. And the word just spreads out. That's what I wanted to do, but nobody bought the show. <clears throat> Yeah, and it's tricky because you gotta. Your yeah, career would have hit the skids. Yeah, yeah you're fucking. It has. Don't worry about you're that. You're fucking with. <laughs> with do you do that on purpose now? <laughs> Are you talking about my last film? Is that what you're really talking about? <laughs> In some bitchy <laughs> American way. You think let's do a film which which isn't gonna work? That nobody's gonna. I mean, nobody's gonna watch spend it. We spend millions to take Johnny Depp and no, make him bald. No, it's kind of interesting. We've ended up making an underground film without any any thought which is kind of what I wanted to do. I mean, it's trying to break down the industry that we're all part of, which is very effective. Very do, what, does break down mean make a flop? Just give me the translation. You're so, so no, but bitter. I think you're a genius, but no, no. you could do, no, no. my son, I'm you could make a film, or you could do the next no, Mary but Poppins, ev but no, you every, choose this everything, drug addict. Everything we live in now is about immediate uh, success. So, you know, we see it, we put it in our mouth. Everything has to be immediate. The success rate is only measured in nanoseconds, not in years. You know, like the Russians at least had five-year plans, the Chinese did as well. I mean, a number of people have five-year <laughs> plans. I had five-year plans, just because Stalin did. Um, no, I just, uh, the, the, the number of years doesn't really matter in the plan. What's it's, your plan? Uh, it was to do other stuff. Like? <laughs> I don't know, different than what I was doing. Well, initially, it was just to get out of the 80s because it was completely shit. Do you need, yeah. do you feel you need to have the adoration of America? No, no, I just, I don't like Bing's, uh, I don't Why do like, you go there, then, rather than New because Zealand? Because it, because it's got all the juice there. It's got 80% of the world's <laughs> the media. <laughs> what yeah. word? I heard that as well. It, it, it has the power, yeah? He said and, juice. And I don't like the idea. But a corrupt power. I want, well, no, 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 I'm talking about pure naked power of Hollywood uh -huh. thing. America is interesting because it has the power, it has the machinery, it has the distribution methods, it has all of those things, and yet it has no ideas. There are no ideas left there. I mean, Did you know this as a kid when you rebelled and said, I'm out of here? Because I smelt it early. Yeah, I think I think did. Did you smell it no, early? No, I, mine was more about, I felt, being an American, I was part of the most powerful nation on the planet, and I felt a certain responsibility, and I felt I couldn't live in America and deal with that. But if I lived in England, I could at least have a perspective from a different part of the world and accept my responsibility as American, who has that knowledge of that, that system. And yet, were you, were you running away from something that you thought was <clears throat> not kosher? 
back to see how it brought it oh, back. Oh, you really, the Jewish theme is really strong. No, but strong do you, did, did you feel it was like... Uh, you know, I came to England and found an audience that seemed to understand what I was doing. Did that's anybody in America selfish, when you no, left? No, that's the, that's the other thing. Yeah. It's such an, it's well, such I, an, you know, yeah. uh, it's such a utopia. the same utopia. thing, the thing you find Well, this is one thing, because I'm, I'm fascinated by America, and I'm, you, you, you're going mm. that way, I'm going that way, but you know what... Because I, I sort know of know, I'm from. I'm, I sort of know the bullshit that's out there. That's why when I went to LA, I thought I'd hate it, but in fact I didn't because the See? bullshit that came towards me, no, the bullshit to that came towards in. me, I was already ready for. I had been trained at bullshit uh, school, and I got some good grades there. And I knew that what, when bullshit comes in, you go, well, that's bullshit, and then you go, well, no, no, that seems okay, and that seems bullshit. But the thing about bullshit, just when you think you've escaped, it's no, no. growing in your no, pants. You're you know? absolutely right. I mean, I grew up out in the San Fernando Valley. Not in Minnesota, I forget it. I mean, my, my f real formative years were out there with Hollywood just over the hill. So I learned to hate these people. I knew they were vile bastards. And, and for years, I knew that if I was incredibly prejudiced and just thought they were all guilty until proved in innocent, life was easier. And it was. And then the certain, when I hit 50, 50 years, can you believe these no. numbers? And, it's, and suddenly I went out there and did a film. And I thought, Oh, they're not so bad. We went to dinner, we went, sat around mm, like, at a like table like now. this. They like Mama's me. Mama's accepted take... you again. And I actually was fooled by it, so be careful. No, no, I know. Because but I you, mean, you know what they... you don't know. All I'm going to say, all I'm going to say is you know, but you don't know. Is that right? But I do know. It's no, you don't. <laughs> but I do know. <laughs> I it's know an illness I that is beyond deception. At college, so I but that's do, the difference. In you, Wales. Yeah, you know, I do know. that I've never <laughs> dreamed of. Bottom line is... <laughs> we can't argue with that. Okay, I could end up being a victim, right? I could end up being a yes. victim. I could end up being living in L.A. and whatever. I could end up living in New York. Is that he also a victim? He says the word. He said the words. Is that also living a victim? In LA. Something will be gone. I don't think so. I'm, this is me trying to be open, because I want to stay here. Mm -hmm. uh, or you I could can't. live in Paris, or I could live somewhere in France, or I could... Or, you know, I, I, I like Europe. I'm, I'm too much into Europe. There's too, the, the cutting edge of politics is right here. Right, so why, yeah. what's this draw to America? Because I'm fascinated by the world. There's also the whole of the Southern Hemisphere. I've got to work out where the fuck it is and go there and, and, and see if I want to hang out there. Right. I'm a world citizen. I was born in Yemen, so, I mean, I want to explore, but I don't want to no. not explore. See, the point is, if, if, you, if you say there's chocolate, 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 okay, now a lot of chocolate's too bad for you. Like, America is chocolate, and I know that I can't mm. eat chocolate anymore, mm. but I want to try a taste of chocolate, or occasionally have a bit of chocolate. Yeah. But if I can be disciplined on it, then you can have a taste of it. Now, that's the thing. If, whether you take the whole drug and you just become addicted to America, right. or whether you have it like a bit and you can do it. Now, it may be, but I have to go through that to get out of it. And you can't come from there and say, well, don't yeah, try no, it. Right. They'll try but it. I, eat I, the, at the chocolate. Moment, I got, son, good luck. I'd grown up in Holly outside of Hollywood, wanting desperately to be part of the thing. I then made movies and, and achieved a certain kind of level of success. I then thought, okay, now I've got it. American, 50 years old, successful movies, boom. I walk into the thing, and they ate me alive. I mean, I spent four years in development hell, being promised things, because it was so nice. It felt so good. It's like, oh, yeah. And you get a car. Oh, it's so good. It's it feels the first. so It's the downfall nice. into hell. The entrance to Hades, you're in a limo. You don't even know it's happening. But the it's beautiful so nice. thing about stand-up is that you can do it anywhere, and that you don't have to go into development hell, you know? Because that's the... Good. Bon fortuna. <laughs> you do the deal first, and then you work out the money. You don't do the money first, and then you work out the deal. You don't say, oh, a million quid? Yeah, what is it? Uh, stick my head in the toilet? Fine. You know, you say, what's the deal? Are we going to do something? Was this going to work in this? All right, okay, now let's try and get as much cash out of you as I can, <laughs> you big multinational bastard. You know, something like that. Yeah. No, so. but that's a different kind of selling out. It, the thing is, they won't say, hey, Eddie, like me. I sell in. I don't sell out. Yeah, <laughs> sell, sell a potato chip, and here's your lines. Is that what you do? For money, I'll spread them as far as you want. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd like all those multi-conglomerates to has know nothing that. on you, does she, <laughs> when it comes to spreading? My first gig. There is no limit to the spread, this says is... my business card. <laughs> I could be your Mazzola. My first gig was in a... Because I went to these boarding schools, right? Now, this, I've never told anyone this, but this was, this was brilliantly crap. Um, but also uh, quite wonderful in a stupid crap way. Uh, one of these boarding schools in the age of six because my mum died, and so I got used to being in these dormitories. They're not like American dormitories. Mm -hmm. right? I thought everyone's in dormitories at college. I thought, what are they in these big... They're, no, they're in these little rooms with one person or two. But that's not a dormitory. A dormitory is a thing with a hundred kids in, all coughing on each other. Because you were and, poor. No, no, because we were... Because I didn't have a mother, essentially. That's why we are in these dormitories. Uh, and they're big things, you know, with about, you know, 20 kids in or whatever. 
uh, big rooms just with a load of metal beds. And I found I could put my dressing gown over the back of this headboard and I could pull it and it went up like curtains. So I thought, <laughs> from that basis, I will do a play right here on my bed. So I, I, I advertised for this. And the headmaster turned up. So when he turned up, I had to do something. Because I, I, I only thought... Then you only practiced the curtain pulling? Yeah. <laughs> The only reason I set up the gig was because the curtain pulling up you looked really good. You walk on the wild side. And I had about four teddy bears, and they did the most crap, improvised <laughs> story moving along my bed that has ever been told. Do you but remember it? No, I just remember going up to one end and doing the other thing. What are we doing here? Change I, voices, change voices. I don't think they were, I don't think they were changing voices. I don't think they did anything, but they moved, they traveled a lot. I mean, I'm really intrigued by this fact, the body. <laughs> I mean, it takes things into one end and expels them from another end. And we just are silly because we've got upright. Most other animals are sensible. But you can see it really clearly. Mouth and result. It goes through like that, horizontal. If you want to walk out we in all fours, vertical. really, it's fine. We're vertical when it comes to dealing with this stuff. Even more so. I mean, the, the why of that. I think, why do we sleep? Why do we have to sleep? Why do we have to oh, sleep? Oh, because, because that's when we're for free. Chance. No, 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 but, but, but why? Why, do, why no, did no, we have to? Because I know the brain we have to. is so busy working all the time. I know, but why? It makes sense. But above that, like, why did whoever it was created, no, they, no, no. Why, didn't this, why didn't we evolve with sleep not coming into it, you know? What, why why is, didn't we evolve with, uh, with, like, better hairdos, you know? It's True, not but the sleep one is more We're fascinating. Trying to move beyond, <laughs> we're trying to move beyond Judaism into some, something bigger. Okay, I, leave me out of this. I'll just eat the chicken. Yeah, why, like, why you, the head you, stop you two right discuss. There. <laughs> you're way beyond me now. What's your best dues? I don't know what you're we're talking about. You're well, young people. You're both young people. I'm discovering all sorts of follicles see? on my neck, back that I've never known He's about. Back to These the, follicles the have sat there for, for 50 years being very quiet, doing nothing. Now, Past 50, these follicles are saying, let's sh shit up, shit this stuff out. Let's just send it out. And this hair He's is like growing everywhere. He's like a prairie everywhere. now. He's like a prairie. <laughs> they could do all the on your back. Buffaloes on my back. <laughs> Not a monkey on my back. I got buffaloes on my back. Where's Ted Turner when you need him? He's, he's raising these things by the thousands. They could Maybe. just work on you. They're better than cows. If McDonald's starts doing buffalo bur big, big buffs, big buffs, this will be good because cows eat so much it fucking grass. It has another grass. connotation. Buffaloes. You can't sell big buffs. Buffaloes. <laughs> you can. You can. Well, with a side order of beaver? Are no, you nuts? No, no. But, but buffaloes. <laughs> buffaloes eat less stuff. Like llamas and alpacas. You know. I'm glad we've uh, Llamas and alpacas eat a lot less I'm grass than sheep. I'm glad we've political now. <laughs> <laughs> but buffaloes just sit there and roam the prairies eating just a little bit. Cows just... What are they? What are they looking after They're their white? Cow hoovers. What? They're looking after the, no, the <laughs> buffalo. Why do they eat less? Why does the cows? I eat don't know, but they're they're more efficient. They're efficient but animals. Their hair Why is do all they over sleep? The place. Why yeah, do they I know. sleep? No, they, did you see their hairdos? It's a mess. You guys want no, to? No, no, we're all the toilet. Flounders. Do you understand about flounders? They're born with their eyes on two sides of their heads, but by the time they become adults, their eyes have moved over, so they're on one side and they're lying on their side. Flounders do I'm this. I'm upset too. I get angry. <laughs> I'm angry. Do they sleep? I'm feeling angry. <laughs> I'm what staying on the sleep. You won't get off that one, will sleep you? Sleep encompasses them all, because we don't have this two-eyed thing. Is it easier thing. to sleep when your eyes are on the same side? Not when you're incontinent. <laughs> the other thing I have a question about, and then this really we show? could end the show, is why are there toilets not? I think we should have a benefit that flush without your approval. You know, you get up and they flush. Oh, Before those you get a chance to inspect. Where, where did that come from? You don't get to like there, you you don't. Look, I think that comes from America, where no one really really wants to admit to commit. that any what, sort of feces thing are these? happens. What toilets are these? In they airports, you get up what? and really? they flush. They sort of say, "Screw you! I don't need you anymore." God, I wish I could fly you first class. You can't even decide. It's not first, first class. class. It's in the no, lounge. It. No, I don't know this. This is a lie. You probably don't it. flush anyway. I bet I'm going to call your wife. You're I the miss, type that walks away. Yes, maybe, but flush, I do. You've seen it in America. I'm not, I don't want people yeah, thinking I'm making this it up. Does what do you, what do you, I don't know this. He just gets got a sensor at the back, so when you when you sit you down, it sends something sat down, and then it when they move up, ass, it picks up your ass getting up. So you could actually sit down and get up as like two seconds later, and it would flush even really? though. Before you had a chance to dissect yeah. whatever you your like medical this with problem your hand. might be. You, you can go like this for yeah. an hour and a half. I've done that, and mm -hmm. there's no knob. Oh, yeah. what a world you live in. Everybody up to pee, up what, to pee at the I'm same time. I'm left. Time. You're left. <laughs> it's me. But there's more cameras. You've got people to talk to. I, I want to eat. eat. Can I go to, I mean, continent? Can I explain that? Let's do it in the, in the napkin.